Hey, it's George Rose. You caught me bebopping to my own theme music there tonight. So how's everybody? I got a lot of phone calls in the last couple of days that people were very emotional and that the energy was heightened for emotion. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. And tonight we are going to do tarot card readings live for every sign of the zodiac. So be sure you watch and watch for your sign and also... Um, you might want to cross-reference if there's somebody in your life that's a different sign. You could listen to that one, too. So welcome to the Soul Space, and I'm glad to have you all here. This is such a great community, and we are growing and growing every week. I would like to send a few shout-outs, actually, um, right now, if we could all just kind of take a deep breath in, and maybe just relax ourselves and focus, and maybe ask the energy to come in and for this next little while that we're spending time together, maybe we could just uh, kind of take a break and focus and ask spirit to open our hearts and our minds so that we get something out of this show. I know I always ground and ask that in the very beginning of each show for myself. So let's send some beautiful love out there to anyone who's really in need of it today. We have a few people in our soul space community that are uh, having physical ailments. Um, John, I know, who was on the show a few weeks ago, is uh, on the way to recovery, and I like to think that some of our good wishes actually helped him do that. I'm just going to share the show here, and um, also want to uh, send shout outs to certain parts of the world right now that are really in need of it. I think that's also why we're all feeling emotional. The energy is in the collective right now is a lot of energy of grief and loss. We've had some major happenings in Haiti and of course I'm sure you're all watching the television with Afghanistan and although this is not a political program I just want to send love to anyone right now who is in challenge or fear that they may triumph um, through their own sadness and if we could just take a minute and kind of breathe energy out to that por those portions of the world, that would be so absolutely amazing. So I'm going to do uh, the astrology a little bit first before we go to, I'm just sharing the show again, before we go to, um, I just want to do this, before we go to the uh, readings, all right, there we go. And the astrology right now is also actually always, it's always appropriate for whatever's going on in the world, right guys? Well, we've got a full moon coming in on the 22nd, which is Sunday. And that full moon is actually a full moon in Aquarius. It's the second full moon in Aquarius that we've had consecutively, which is unusual, but also amplifies the energy. Not just that, but right now we have Jupiter going retrograde, stationing direct in Aquarius, which makes the planet really, really intense right now. And um, Jupiter in Aquarius is futuristic oriented energy. It's um, the energy of expansion. So usually wherever Jupiter is in your chart, it's going to expand whatever it's touching in that portion of your chart. And usually that's benevolence and good things and, and expanding abundance and joy and all those great uh, happy positive emotions. But if there's something that Jupiter is touching in the chart that's negative, it will expand that as well. So, you know, uh, Jupiter and Saturn have been playing around in Aquarius since the beginning of this year. And as you can see, I have my little chart in front of me right now to reference. And so that's the energy of newness, futuristic energy. So when this full moon comes in on Sunday, we really want to try and ground in that energy and maybe journal or write about, my hair doesn't look so good today, journal or write about, um, what we really want our future to look like. Who do we really want to show up to be in the world? And what are the impediments or the obstacles that we have for doing that? Um, I think this is a really important time to look at that. The astrology is really going to give us support in order to make some changes in our life. And in the outer world, you know, in the macrocosm of what's going on right now, that Jupiter and Saturn is all about trust. It's all about justice. It's about freedom because we have Uranus, obviously, coming in very strong in Taurus right now. And Uranus in Taurus is an energy of sudden change, of future, but it's also in Taurus a very grounded energy. It's a very fixed energy. It's an energy of 
that justice of freedom, of injustice, of what do we have to revolt against in a very quick way, but these are changes that are going to be in place for a long time. So Uranus is this lightning quick changing, wanting to bring us into the future energy, but in Taurus it's a very heavy, staid, um, almost like the, the immovable force meets the in, um, immovable object, right? And so, is that what the saying is? I think that's the saying. Um, and so what happens is you have this like friction all the time. And that's what this year has really brought us on the world stage and also probably in some things in our lives. So when we go to the cards, we're going to see how that's played out in your own astrology. But there's full moon in, in Aquarius. We've got Saturn in Aquarius. We've got Jupiter in Aquarius. So this is heightened Aquarian energy. The positive aspect of Aquarian energy is service to the world. It's how do you see your future and where do you see yourself giving back and being of service? The lower octave of Aquarian energy is detachment. It's coldness. It is um, not wanting to be a joiner, feeling that you're too unique to be part of a crowd. And so that individualization that we've seen in the last year become more amplified where everyone wants to be so different. And yet when you look at it, everybody's trying to be different in the same way, so they're all the same, right? That kind of extremism is the lower octave of Aquarian energy. What we really want to manifest with this full moon and the Aquarian energy is how we can be of service to the world, where do I need to give something in order to benefit, not take so much. Um, Aquarian energy is also a great energy for inspiration, for innovation, science, um, with that Uranus in Taurus energy, it's a great combination for food supplies, sound healing. Um, so the, the lower octave is those detriments and those shortages that we've been feeling. The higher octave is new innovations in those fields, new ways to, to make food, new, new ways to um, bring science into sound healing. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if around this full moon we see some kind of a new breakthrough in the healing or the reparation of the COVID viruses or something like that, or a new breakout, um, you know, healing, uh, something that's innovative and new. I also think this is very indicative of galactic energy. And I believe that's why we've had all these things with Branson and with, um, you know, um, Elon Musk and all these things, SpaceX and all these people going into space now and, and you know, paid for space travel. That's definitely Aquarian, Uranian energy. Um, this is the breakdown of things so that we can break through them. You know, um, I have a perfect story to tell you about this type of energy. And this is a story that you can think about maybe to inspire you when the full moon in Aquarius comes this Sunday. So um, in 2015, I made a decision that I was going to close my real estate brokerage, and I actually ended up merging it into another company. But I decided that just for personal reasons, the company was still successful, but for personal reasons, I just was like, you know, I really don't want to be tied to this bricks and mortar and this business and all of the attributes that came with it. It was a pretty large firm. And I decided to close it, and it merged, I should say, but I didn't know I was merging it at the time. When I decided to close it, um, it was a decision on my part so that I could do more spiritual work in my life. So it all turned out great, and I ended up merging with another company, and then they offered me a position as senior VP, and all this stuff happened, which was really great. But at the time when I was really dismantling my offices and closing the doors, I really thought I was going to be going on to this more spiritual life. I had uh, planned on traveling. I wanted to go to Peru and all these places. And I knew closing the business was going to enable me to have the financial security and the freedom to do that. So I was dismantling the offices and I had all this stuff. I mean, myself and my assistant at the time, we sold everything. Because, you know, what are you just going to do with it all? You know, and, and I'm a big proponent of if I can't use it, maybe somebody else can. So I had all this stuff. I had file cabinets. I had a conference room full of furniture. I had, you know, 3,000 square feet of stuff. So little by little, I piecemealed it out. Whatever I didn't went into storage. And at the end of this, you know, final time I was getting to when the leases were up, I had office stuff that I really didn't want to store, really know I would never use again. So I called um, the Breast Cancer Coalition in my nearby town that I, at the time, was volunteering for. And I said, do you guys need any office equipment or any stuff? And they said, yes, how much is it? And I didn't really want to charge them. 
But for some reason, I just had this intuitive feeling like I wasn't supposed to give my stuff away. That in order to honor what I had built and, and what I had created in my life, those creations, although going to someone else secondhand, needed to be honored by an exchange. So I said to them, just give me like a nominal fee. I think it was like $50 for each piece or something like that. I don't even remember. Maybe it was for the whole lot. I don't even remember. But I said, just give me this because whatever you give me, I'm actually using for my spiritual travel fund and it's going to enable me to do my work in the world. So they were great with that and um, they did it and everything. And so I ended up having to make a few trips with my SUV and bring this stuff over there. This is back in 2015. So, you know, I was uh, just raring to go, had nothing really else, wasn't doing a podcast, wasn't doing all this stuff, I had the time to do all this. And I went there and there was a woman there, um, I won't use her name for privacy, and she said to me, um, you know, I had gone to one of your Reiki circles a while back and I felt so amazing the next day. I didn't even realize what the energy was, but it was so amazing. And that whole day I just was like, you know, in this other place of vibration and I was just upbeat and I felt all this stuff. And she said, and then I went to the market that day and I was given change. It was just like any other day, but I had been remarking all day to people how great I felt after this Reiki that you did the night before. And it was my first time ever getting Reiki, so I really didn't know what to expect. It was just the most wonderful experience. So the cashier gave me back my change, and I'm standing in the offices of the Breast Cancer Coalition, kind of wondering, why is she telling me this story about going to the supermarket and her change? And she handed me a dollar, and she said, this is the change I got that day after you gave me Reiki, and I think it belongs to you. And I said, why? And I looked at the dollar bill, and on it, it said, Spiritual Travel Fund. I kid you not. And she did not write it there. This really happened. This was, she said, I've been wondering what this meant, and I've been kind of holding on to it, and now I know it's for you. So that was just complete and total confirmation from the world that everything I was doing on my path was right, and my path was moving forward, and it was Uranian, and it was Aquarian, and it was going into the future of how I could save the world and what I needed to do. And, you know, sometimes things are being orchestrated behind the scenes, and we don't even know it. And long story short, the company that I ended up merging my business into at that time offered me a great executive position that I ended up taking. I never got to Peru, and I never got to spread my sprinkly, my sprinkly dust and my, my twinkle sparkly dust all over the world, but I ended up being able to spread it where this position was offered to me in a really amazing way. So you never know how things are going to work out. Just have faith. And that's my message for you guys tonight is go into that Aquarian energy and that breakdown the deteriorating of things is really bringing you to a breakthrough. You just don't know it yet sometimes. We're all so blessed when it happens, though. So, um, so that is the example of this full moon coming in and the kind of things you need to watch for and the kind of things you need to manifest. So I am going to go through the zodiac. Who do I have online tonight? I've got Joanne and Aaron. I hope you guys like my stories because I don't want to bore you guys. Um, Sarah. I got Janine and Joanne and Aaron. Everybody's out there. So tonight, the agenda is, folks, sun's in Leo, moon's in Sagittarius. It's a great night for a party, boy. If you want to get out and about, tonight is the night. We got two fire signs going for sun and moon. Um, Venus just went into Libra. Mars is in Virgo. A little fix there. We've got Jupiter, Saturn in Aquarius, and the moon's headed that way before Sunday. So I am going to go through the zodiac, and I'm going to start with the planet, with the sign of Aries. And I know Aaron Bartles, you've been waiting for cards and you want to hear about what's going on with Aries. Okay. So I'm going to pull a few cards to tell the story for Aries. This flew out of the deck. So Mr. and Mrs. Aries, you got the Knight of Cups coming in. That means that there's some kind of message for you. And usually when you um, do cards for zodiac signs or for signs of the zodiac, you probably want to listen to your rising sign because that's really where the astrology is going to be for you. If anybody wants to call into the show, the number is up, and you can do that. It's on the screen. For those of you who are um, listening and not watching, that number is, uh, Bobby will put it up, and I'll tell you what it is. So, Aries, you've got Knight of Cups coming in and the Hermit. What I'm interpreting that about, Mr. and Mrs. Aries out there, is that you need to get out of the house a little bit more. You know, it's funny because Aries are really party people sometimes. They like to go out. They're a fire sign. Aries likes to be doing stuff, doing stuff. But 
I'm seeing this Aries hasn't been going out too much. Maybe too much money, too much time on business and money things, and you need to be more social and let your life flow a little bit more than you've been. Um, something is going to drag you out of your hermit shell, though. You've got new beginnings that want to come, Aries. You've got the Ace of Wands here, which is a card of complete new beginnings. I feel like you've been really nostalgic lately. Home, thinking about the past. What am I going to do? What should I do? What should I have done differently? You really want to give that ghost up. Put it back in the closet. Bury the ghost forever. Whatever you got to do, sweep it off the porch. But my Aries babies, you are meant to get out because there is a new beginning wanting to come up for you. You're not letting it come through, Aries. Look at that. Aries, you're being too competitive about something. And I feel like it's in the past. And if you stay in the past and you let the hermit card be what's, what's you know, drawing you forward, you can't let this be your future. Because if you do, Mr. and Mrs. Aries out there, my Aries babies, if you do that, the tower card's right here. This is everything falling away. So you really don't want to have that happen. So you've got to move forward. You've got to get out in the light. Stop ruminating about the past and whether or not you did something or, or didn't do something or if somebody got the better of you. You want to move forward. There's a new love interest waiting out there. If you are currently in a relationship and this love interest recently came in, what you want to do is not compare it to the past if you've been doing that. Don't let the old wounds define this relationship that's coming in. All right. If anybody out there in the comments or wants to call in, if you think this is especially for you and you're an Aries, I'd love to hear about that. Sun, moon, or rising. Yeah, I feel like you're being too so judgmental about yourself. You feel like maybe you played the fool sometime before and now you're overly sensitive to it. But my advice for Aries, this, um, this full moon and this time, next few, couple of weeks, I would say, get out create a future. Stop worrying about the past. All right. Going to pick an angel card for you, Aries, out there. Also right now, Aries, you've got Chiron in your sign, the planet of the wounded healer. So that could be bringing up some things as well. And you want to move forward. You want to take action on those old wounds. Here you go. Your card is patience, Archangel Jophiel. Your dreams are blooming more rapidly than you realize. Still, they need nurturing and patience. And what I will say to you is that your dreams are blooming. There's stuff being orchestrated behind the scenes, just like the story I just told. But you've got to participate in that. You've got to take action and move your life forward. If we do not allow the universe to know what we truly want by our actions, it's not going to give it to us. So Aries, act the way you really want your life to go. Don't be so sulky, okay? Next sign I'm going to do is Taurus. If anybody has any questions for Aries, last call. Um, so the next, next zodiac sign is Taurus. Taurus, you've got Uranus right in your zodiac sign, and you will for the next couple of years. So that is creating change, big change in your life, and you want to go with those changes. You don't want to um, be in typical Taurian energy where you're fixed and you're that bull that stays in place. It's really important that you move the bull forward, Taurus. Okay, one more shuffle for these on my Taurus, for my Taurus bulls. Taurus can be so stubborn. I know. Trust me. I've had Tauruses in my relationships. There you go. Lover's card. Taurus, lover's card is not always what we think. A lot of times the lover's card means that in a love relationship right now, we have interference. It's also a um, card of Archangel Gabriel of clear messages for me. And if you can zero in on this... Um, this tarot card, I'm just looking at the monitor so I know when the light's hitting it and not hitting it. There you go. Um, you see two lovers, and in between them is this beautiful angel. But usually what this card means is interference in a love relationship. Now, it ha is in the reverse position for me. Maybe not for you guys on camera, but for me it is. So the lovers in a reverse position usually means that either it's in the past, which I feel like it very much might be, or it could be in the future. But I think this is in the past. And because Taurus, the card right next to it is soulmate relationship card. This is the best card in the deck. But again, it, it did not come in reverse. So this is current. So we have a caller. Hello, caller. Okay. 
So we don't have a collar. So the, this card next to the lover's card means that the relationship that you have now is not like this other relationship. The other relationship had interference in it. It may have even, when I say interference in a relationship, it could be a person that came in, like somebody was cheating, a third person in the relationship, or it could also be an addiction, something that came between you two, or alcohol, or it could also be, when I say interference in a relationship, it could also be, you know, just the pesky mother-in-law or sister or kid or whatever that just came between you. But this is definitely interference in a relationship, and that's in the past. And then I have this new card coming in that is a soulmate relationship. This is like true love. So don't, if you're in a new relationship, Taurus, or you're in a, currently in a committed relationship, don't compare it to what happened in the past. Trust yourself to make the right decision. Yeah, we've got the judgment card coming up. Seems like we're all getting the same messages about trust and justice and injustice. So this justice card is, you're looking, Taurus, you're looking for that um, wrong thing. You're looking for the misstep. You're looking for the, the evidence that this person is not trustworthy. You're not going to find it. This person is a trustworthy person. So, you know, stop acting like a fool and get your, get your uh, relationship together because... This is a good relationship. This person is very loving for you, and they are not like an empress sitting on the throne. They're not like a demanding person. In the past, Taurus, I know that you've been really betrayed, but that is not going to happen with this particular relationship. But if you keep putting all this energy of betrayal from the past around it, you're going to create that as your reality. So my Taurus energy is out there. I'm going to pick two more cards. You have a decision to make. You've been putting this decision off. You need to make the decision, my Taurus friends, Taurus moon, sun, or risings, because if you keep prolonging the decision to be all in on this newer relationship, you're going to lose it. So treat this person with the respect they're showing you that they deserve, because I have to tell you that it's not the same as the other relationship you've had in the past. And this is a very similar read to the Aries reading, but different in the sense that this relationship that you're in now, super, super good stuff. See it for what it is. Don't compare it to an old photograph of something else. Take a new picture and embed it on your brain. I'm going to pick an angel card for you. I'm going to pick an angel card for this relationship of soulmates. For my Taurus Risings. And I would say this reading is probably at least until a week after the full moon, which is Sunday. Compassion. Soften your heart with respect to the situation and all the people involved, including yourself. So you see, Spirit is telling you to soften your heart. Let go. Be in love. Be loving to this person, this relationship. See it for what it really is. Okay, my next sign is Gemini's. Gemini's, you have been very busy little bees, I gotta say. Oh, here now I see my comments. I wasn't seeing any comments. Um, Age of Aquarius, right? Old song. Great song, though, Tony. Marvelous. Yes, Aquarians are very eccentric, uh, Tony. Thank you for the compliment on the show. Um, yeah, Aquarians are eccentric, but... In the higher octave of Aquarian, they don't care what anyone thinks. You know, Aquarians are like the ones sitting in the front row of the theater with the goofy hat on because they're just a real great fan of the band and they don't care what anybody else is. That's like Aquarian in the high octave. Aquarian in the low octave is up in the nosebleed seats because they're self-conscious about the funny hat they're wearing. So Aquarians are supposed to let their freak flag fly because that's really good for the universe. So I'm going into my Geminis now. Hey, Pamela Betty, how are you? Pamela Betty has a fabulous band. If you put in the comments where you're playing, Pam, I'll put it up there. Um, so for my Geminis, the first card I got is the Devil card. They told me to pull out of the center of the deck, and that's what we got. Um, the Devil card. Now, the Devil card does not mean you're possessed or the Devil's going to get you. The Devil card in Tarot means that you have some kind of a self-imprisonment or a restriction that you're allowing to kind of run your life a little bit. This judgment card has come up in every reading. And I will tell you, the judgment card is also very Uranian. Um, it, it's a symbolic card, just like the devil card, of wanting freedom. So don't be surprised if around this full moon a lot of relationships break up as well. Because when that Uranus energy 
um, hits a square to that Aquarian energy, which is what's going to happen, that Uranus and Taurus is going to hit a square with Aquarius. And that's been going on all year, um, Uranus and, and Saturn having a square. That energy is like everybody wants to be free. Like they're, they're going to accuse the partner of trying to tie him down. And they don't like it and they want to get out. And then usually that doesn't always stick. <laughs> so it's on again, off again stuff. But around the full moon this Sunday, the 22nd, that full moon in Aquarius will cause a lot of breakups, I will tell you. But don't worry, they might not be permanent. So the judgment card is coming in. And again, the judgment card, Archangel Gabriel, one of my fave angels, blowing his horn, trumpet, which means messages. The judgment card can also mean health. So on a global scale, this for me can also mean, you know, that COVID is going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. Just saying. So back to the Gemini reading. So Gemini, the devil card comes up for you, and I'm really feeling like that is some kind of a restriction that you have self-imposed in your life. Maybe you're staying in a relationship that really isn't the best for you. Um, I got the lover's card just as I said that. So the lover's card in that um, next to the devil card usually means for me that someone in the relationship is in addiction. Uh, usually drugs or alcoholism for me. And this energy is a self-imprisonment. Like they are like, you know, putting their own life in a prison, restricting their own life through their inability to break through the chains that bind them, which is the addiction. And that's really the energy I get around this Gemini. Now, Geminis, this could be someone you are in a relationship with or it could be you. Only you know that. Um, but these are the cards that are coming up. Again, you need to make a decision and move forward. This um, hangman card is a card of indecision. It's the one card in the deck that if you put it this way or you put it this way, really kind of looks the same. Um, it's also a Libra card for me. So Geminis, if you are in a relationship with anyone who is a Libran energy, this definitely pertains to you. Um, there is something restricting, restricting, restricting you in regards to this relationship and it's not good and you probably need to move forward. This is not a black or white situation as this chariot card depicts. This is a situation of you just need to, you know, put the car out of park, put it in drive and get the hell out of Dodge because this relationship is going to either manifest in your addictions and your self-imprisonment getting worse or you enabling the other person if they are the one with the addiction and self-imprisonment. Um, do not wait in this situation so long that the car is idling at the curb and someone freaking steals it. Because this could be a thief in the night betrayal kind of energy. Um, you want to make a decision here. And you want to make a decision. And the question that comes to mind that they're whispering in my ear for you, Gemini, is do the relationships in my life promote the love I have for myself? Do they teach me self-love? If the re this relationship that is restricting, binding the chains on you, or you're seeing someone else do that to themselves and it's causing you pain, if that is the scenario, you need to move away from the relationship because it will not teach you to love yourself. If you are the one with addiction of any kind or you're drinking too much or whatever it might be, you need to move away from that in order to find self-love. If it's the partner with that issue, you need to move away from them to find your own self-love. Choices. Yes, that's absolutely unequivocally what the reading is. This is the card of choices for me. You're not seeing that you do have another choice. You're throwing up your hands and taking the easy way out and saying, oh, but I can't. Oh, but I don't want to. Oh, but what about? What about? What about? Stop the BS. Grab the cup that spirit is offering you because there's a golden opportunity that you are just not seeing. So you need to step out of the relationship Take a few deep breaths, look around you, and see a really beautiful, miraculous choice that is going to be presented to you or is already being presented to you that you're not seeing. I'm going to clarify this reading with a angel card, and then we're going to move on to Cancer. Okay, we're going to get to Pisces. We're going to get through all the signs. So next sign is Cancer. Here is your angel card for Gemini. There you go, Divine Order, Archangel Ragwell. Archangel Ragwell is the angel that um, heals relationships. So what I'm saying is true for you, Gemini. And the card says everything is how it needs to be right now. Look past illusion and see underlying order. So look past the illusion and see what is being offered you in a real choice that you're just not looking at. Okay, Cancers, my water signs. Cancer, moons always will affect you. Because Cancer is ruled by the moon. So if you are a sun, moon, or rising Cancer, this is your reading. Okay, something's going on. You have a battle that you are fighting for something. And what I can tell you, Cancer, is there is recognition coming. 
Um, a lot of new beginnings for you, but before you leave what's old, you take one more stand in your own um, in your own worth. This is about you stepping up and saying, I'm a person, I'm worth this, this is what I feel, in a very firm, simplistic, simply stated way. No battling, no yelling, no screaming, because that is how you will be recognized. You need to speak conversationally what you want to speak, Cancer. Do not go in your shell about this situation. This is a situation where you need to step out of the shell and speak your mind. Page of Cups, you might do it through an email, text, or electronically, but I strongly suggest that you talk. Speak. I'm getting throat chakra here. Cancer, speak up. Once you do that, you're going to find freedom. This is the Wheel of Fortune card. It means balance in all areas of your life. So speak whatever you need to speak, Cancer. I know you like to go in the shell and avoid conflict, but this is one time when you're not supposed to do that, my Cancer friends. This is so clear to me that there's something kind of stuck in your throat, stuck, I'm sorry with the mic, stuck in your, your chest. You need to get it off your chest. This is a long time coming. It's preventing you from going out in the world and, and really being your full potential. You've got to talk and tell people what this is or person what this is, if it's a parent or whatever, because um, this is heartbreaking for you and you're allowing it to be heartbreaking when it doesn't have to be. As soon as you speak your peace, Cancer, the heartbreak eliminates, goes away, and life starts to flow. I'm going to take an angel card for you to confirm your reading. This one flew out of the deck. It's Archangel Shamwell. Shamwell also a relationship angel, this beautiful aqua blue color. If I pray to Shamwell before I go to sleep, if I have a riff with a friend or anyone, in the morning it heals. I get a phone call or I make a phone call and everything is well. And it says right here, I am helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. Soulmates can take any form. They can be friendships. They can be parental. They can be child. They can be lover. They can be just a friend a brother or sister, family of origin, but whatever it is, um, Cancer, heal that relationship by speaking your truth. Leos, my beautiful fire signs. The sun is in your sign now. It is definitely um, a time when Leos are thriving in the spotlight, etc. So my little Leo friends, step out, go out, be around as many people as you can. Things will happen right now in your lives. One more time, we're going to do this because the same, if the judgment card comes up after I do this, then we know spirit, the angels have a great sense of humor. Okay, Leo, the tower card, upside down, which means it's already happened. So for some of my Leos out there, a lot of stuff has gone on in the last two years that has just had things falling away, falling away for you. You want to allow that to flow, have a reaction to it, don't ignore it, don't try to um, repress it because it'll just come rearing its ugly head in a different way and you'll face more loss because I feel like the loss is ended. Let's see what the cards say. You've got the Knight of Cups coming in telling you something good. I just felt a psychic hit that this might be um, business, employment, job. It's more in your material world that this is coming true. Um, try to understand that you don't know everything yet. If you're trying to make a decision about a career path or something that you want to do in your life, um, try to realize that there's more information coming before you make that decision. Go slow. Don't be afraid some opportunity is going to be missed. It's not. You're going to take the opportunity, but you have to do your research first. Okay. Um, this is really great, actually. Don't worry about things that fell away, the bad luck, the bad karma, the bad whatever stinky poo-poo stuff that happened in the past. You've got some really great stuff coming in providing you don't leap without looking. You know, really do your diligence, look at things, kind of discern what's good and what's not, because the card that I'm getting for your outcome is this beautiful card that the world can be in your hands. So realize that the changes that happened were really good and that they brought you some really beautiful opportunities. I'm going to pick one more card and then an angel card for you. Yeah, and this is even going to bring in a beautiful soulmate partnership. Now, partnership can also be business. It may be business that turns, that turns to love or vice versa. But I feel like right now, Leo, some great stuff is on the horizon for you if it hasn't already appeared. So just take that with you and know that as long as you are responsible and do the right thing as far as taking your time, methodically, going through the motions, everything will be fine. And your card is Archangel Heniel. 
Trust and follow your renewed passion in your love life and career. Can't make this stuff up, guys. So it's Archangel Haniel. Trust your renewed passion in your love life and career. So go slow. Know these things are great. Don't make hasty decisions. Don't be the lion who roars. Just be that lion who waits in his little cubby hole for the right time to come out. Um, you know, lions conserve their strength for the right moment, right? That's what you got to do, Leo. Next is Vir Virgo. Virgo is our beautiful earth sign. And earth signs are very affected by Uranus and Taurus because that is an earth sign as well. So let me see what's in store for my Virgo people out there. I'm going to get to Scorpio right after Libra. I'm doing them in order. So we're doing Virgo now. We'll get to everybody. And if you missed yours, I'll timestamp it later so you guys can go back and listen. Okay, so my Virgos got the world card. It's in reverse, though, so you got a little bit of work to do before the world rewards you with everything. Virgos, you are on a spiritual path right now, trying to marry your spiritual and material world. Do the work that's needed. Be brave. Um, I feel like a relationship may be a little bit unbalanced right now. Maybe you are feeling the loss of someone or worried about the loss of someone, don't be. Just keep going. The universe always has your back and you are fully supported. Whatever happens with that, what you're supposed to be focusing on right now is merging your spiritual and material world to create balance in your life. Virgos have a tendency to be a little bit fussy and Venus in Virgo these last few weeks also, um, Venus just went into Libra, so that'll pass now. But the last few weeks, Venus and Virgo has made you very fussy and picky with whoever your partners are. So for you, Virgos, try and relax. Know that you need to maybe just be a little bit more compassionate and loving. You don't have the whole story. There may be more news coming as far as this um, issue that you're working on with partnership. The biggest partnership you need to work on right now, though, is your partnership with yourself and balancing your own world and your spiritual and mental activity uh, and material activity. If you can do that, there's a lot of opportunity waiting for you. But truthfully, Virgo, do the work. The, the universe doesn't want you to slack here. The universe wants you to do the work to balance yourself, and then the other relationships will come in. I'm going to pick a angel card to confirm your reading. Take back your power. Virgos, use your God-given power and intention to manifest blessings in your life. And that's really what we're saying is focus on yourself, getting your balance back so that you can then have everything that's good coming to you come into your life because you'll attract it. But you've got to focus on yourself, this beautiful star card, merging your material and your spiritual in your life. Don't let the pendulum swing too far in either direction and don't be too picky about your relationships. Let them flow. Do the work. Libra. Air signs. We're going to do some cards for you now, my beautiful Librans. Okay, Libra. What's going on with you? Libra, you've been really hard on yourselves lately. Oh, my goodness. Venus just went into your sign, Libra, so things are going to turn around. Just pulled out the Magician card. This is also a card for Pisces. So for my Librans out there, Mr. and Mrs. Libran, if you're going out or having a relationship with a Pisces or you have a boss who's a Pisces, this is actually a good pairing. It may teach you lessons and not always be easy, but there's infinite possibilities with it. If you look at the Magician card, um, the, the infinity sign is over the head, meaning that you have the power to create and manifest whatever you want in your life. So stop being so hard on yourself, um, Librans. Move forward. You're not dead yet. There's plenty of abundance out there. You've just got a, one more battle, one more hurdle, and then this Magician card is going to start taking effect. They're telling me two more cards for you. Yeah, King of Wands and Page of Swords. Great combo. So this means that, again, a powerful position. You've got this, you know, Ten of Swords here, which to me is a judgment card, a card of old things falling away also. But it's also sometimes we're just hard on ourselves and we don't think we have the strength to move on. But we do because the magician comes in and tells us that we have infinite power. There's abundance that wants to come in, but you're not allowing it. But you have one more battle. And this King of Wands is this fire energy. It's a Leo energy. It's an Aries energy. I feel like this might have been something in the past that was an impediment for you. But if you can make that person your ally, everything starts to come in for you. So I am going to pull an angel card. Whoops. And then we're going to move on to Scorpio.
Archangel Joel Feel, outdoors, go outside, get some fresh air, and connect with nature to relieve stress and gain new creative ideas. What I'm pulling off this card is gain new creative ideas, especially with this King of Wands, Libra, because I feel like you might have another go at it with this person. If this is a romantic interest, you may renew a relationship. If it's a business partnership or a boss, I feel like you're going to bring them around to your way of thinking. So just get off the Ten of Swords stuff. You're not dead yet. You got plenty of life in you. You have infinite possibility, abundance waiting to come in. Just kind of you got to shift the energy a little bit so that you're the victor. All right. You can get what you want. Make sure you do your full moon manifestations because that'll bring in stuff too. I'm sorry, that was Scorpio. Um, Saggies. We're up to Sag. Did I do Scorpio? Someone put a comment in because I just bleeped out, which I do sometimes when I read. Hi, David. Hi, Monica. Somebody put in comments because I think that was, uh, do you know, Bobby, that was Scorpio or Libra? Never mind. He's too busy working the board. So I'm, I'm going to do uh, Sag. Yeah, I'm up to Sag. Okay. Oh, so then I, we didn't do Scorpio. So this is Scorpio then. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. That was a glitchy glitch because I looked at the clock. That's why. And I brought myself out of my realm into 3D. Right. Well, Bobby, my producer is Scorpio, so we can't miss Scorpio. <laughs> wow, well, I'm human. <laughs> okay, so Scorpio, the hermit card for you, Scorpio. That's how we start out the evening with uh, Aries. So there's a situation that you feel you have no control over, that you're not able to change, but you are, because if you look at the Eight of Swords, it's a card where this person is blindfolded and thinks they can't move forward, that they're imprisoned, but there's nothing, no reason why they can't move forward. So Scorpios, know that there's a situation that you've kind of been putting your head in the sand saying, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I don't have a way out. There is, and sometimes that way out is a simple conversation. Got the moon card for you tonight, Scorpio. So this full moon is going to be very intense for you. It's probably going to change the situation that we're referring to. So you want to make sure during that full moon that you... Um, do your manifestations. If there's anything that you feel is blocking you from moving forward into that Aquarian energy of forwardness, you want to really make sure you have the conversation, clear the deck, sweep the porch. Really important to do. And then the next card that I got was the Eight of Cups, which means that there's so much abundance and so many things going on that you're not making the choice you need to make. This reinforces for me that feeling that your, your, your imprisonment is an illusion. There's no reason why you can't move forward. You have all these great things coming in for you. You're just focusing maybe a little bit on the wrong thing. So clear whatever situation is, you know, bringing, giving you, giving, you're giving, clear whatever situation you're giving your energy to that really isn't productive for you. Yeah, because we've got all this abundance coming in. Look at all this coin. You've got the world in your hands looking out at the future. So there's something, Scorpios, that you need to clear and do it during the full moon or towards the full moon day before or after, uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. The full moon is on Sunday. And here is your angel card, Scorpios. Same card we got for, I believe it was Virgo. Take back your power. Use your God-given power and intention to manifest blessings in your life. And that's what we're talking about. Get rid of the situations that are impediments. Because full speed ahead, you know, you're, you're reaching 40,000 feet and the seatbelt sign is, and the take seatbelt so off sign just went on. You need to fly high. We're going to do Sagittarius. Fire sign, Saggies. I love Saggies. Love my Saggies. Okay. As I said, sun's in Leo, moon's in Sag today. Great day for a party. Okay, Saggies, you're moving away from an emotional situation. This is an unexpected move. You didn't think you were going to have to do it. Causing you a little bit of heartbreak, Saggies. But uh, I'm a sad rising. This is so for me. <laughs> I got to laugh. Okay. So moving away from an emotional situation, going to cause you some heartbreak. But man, this is packed with a new beginning. Your heart's not going to be broken very long, Saggies, because you just move forward and boom. You're like springing out of that sadness. Archangel Gabriel's giving you messages. You've got so much stuff coming in for you. Let's see what it's about. Page of Swords comes in with some uh, messages. Usually pages are electronic messages for me, text, emails, things like that. 
and I have a feeling this is an opportunity of a business or work relation. You're going to fight for it. You might be in competition with another person, but you will prevail. And it, it's definitely business because it brings abundance. So don't worry about the loss of a relationship or something emotional. Maybe it was an older job that you have to move away from. New stuff comes in. It is like the comeback is better than anything that you could have ever dreamed. You get an opportunity. A message comes in. You may be in competition for it, but then it comes to you. Plenty of abundance. And this has to do with something, either a Leo, Aries, fire sign, Sagittarius, another Sagittarius fire sign that has something to do with this situation. I feel like that's a male. So let me bring a angel card in to confirm the reading for you, Sagittarius. But if you're, if you're in heartbreak and you find yourself having to move away from something that's heartbreaking, don't be too deep in it because something great comes in. So don't go too deep into your depression. Yeah, prosperity is your card, Saggies. So Archangel Ariel, one of my favorite angels, she's so beautiful. Your material needs are provided as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. So you've got some major opportunities coming in for you, Sagittarians. So definitely make sure you write your manifestation, what you want to manifest on the full moon, because you are very powerful right now. Next is Capricorns. My Cappies, I love my Cappies, although they can be a little bit detached. Capricorns always climb the mountain. They're so strategic. I do really well with Capricorn men because they're so grounded and, and business-oriented. Okay, Capricorns. Here are your cards for the full moon, week before and week after. Capricorns, you did not get the recognition that you felt like you deserved. But don't worry because things are going to be in balance. This came from some woman in your life. It could be a mother figure or a partner. Or it could be a boss, but someone in authority in your life that is female is not giving you the recognition that you deserve, Capricorns. But don't worry, everything balances out. I have a feeling that maybe something ending around the new moon and something beautifully new coming in. You've got the Wheel of Fortune here, which means that whatever new comes in and manifests for you is more balanced than what went out. What is going out from your life, Cappies, was never really truly balanced in the way you needed it to be. The universe is trying to bring in something that is very balanced for you and that will enhance all parts of your life, not just a couple of them. This may cause you a little bit of grief, a little bit of sorrow, a little bit of sadness, but again, you have the opportunity and the choice whether you want to stay in that sadness or not. We've got, again, the Eight of Swords that you can just walk through. The swords are not in front of you. There's no impediment to you moving into your future other than your own emotions. You don't want to wallow in that sadness. You want to move forward and you want to realize that you do have abundance, but you are possibly walking away from new choices and new things that come in. So don't block that. Let whatever needs to fall away, fall away. Maybe a difficult time for a little while, but then new stuff, better stuff does come in. I feel like the, all these readings are basically the same tonight for each sign. I'm going to pull an angel card for our confirmation on this, Capricorns. I feel your sadness, but know that the universe is trying to bring you something better. This is the same card that we got before. You guys showed me shuffle the card. I am helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship, beloved one. So there's a soulmate relationship that wants to come in for you, Capricorn, but you got to clear some of this stuff first. Don't be too worried about a loss or a feeling of loss that you act out of that fear. Do what you know you need to do in order to move your life forward. Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius, this is your full moon. So this is going to really, really impactful. Um, Funny, always taught that the person you are reading for needed to draw their own cards. No, not at all. Um, I'm, I'm, I read psychically anyway, so that could be for tower readers who aren't really very psychic, uh, Kate, but I can pull. I mean, I could do a reading without the cards. I just am using them tonight for entertainment purposes. Um, so Aquarius, um, your full moon is in your sign, so that's very powerful for you. This is going to bring about a lot of changes and a lot of endings and beginnings. So let's see what the cards are saying for you. Tell me to cut the deck. The Fool. So Aquarians, take this full moon really seriously. Don't think, oh yeah, this is all mumbo jumbo, whatever. This is a time when you can really manifest a lot of things. You are in control of your own life. Don't let other people dictate to you or tell you what your authority is. 
Do not allow something that is very conforming to be your authority. As an Aquarian, you want to be unique. You want to be quirky. So don't try and fall in line with everyone else. It's not going to work for you. You've got a new beginning coming if you allow yourself to be who you are and allow yourself and allow spirit to give you a message about where you really want to be in the world as far as being of service to the world. So allow that to happen because you're stunting it if you're trying to, you know, march to the beat of somebody else's drum. You got to be you, Aquarius. I feel like there's something coming in an opportunity, again, online, email, text, social media. Um, it may even be something that kind of triggers you in some way, brings up some old things. It has to do with a partnership. Um, this thing that is brought up through electronic media of some kind kind of comes in between the relationship you're in right now. But that's okay. It's meant to happen because there's a lesson there that you really need to learn. Yeah. So definitely, I'm sorry to say, Aquarians, you're going to have an ending and beginning. Ending and beginning here with the new moon, full moon. Um, and it's nostalgic for you. It's something that brings up a wound from the past. But this is all happening to clear and be cleared. I'm going to... Um, pick an angel card for you. This is going to be a very intense weekend, very intense full moon for Aquarians. And usually you guys like to be detached. So try and get in touch with your emotions, ground in nature, etc. Because I really think that um, there's truth in those emotions and there's power in those emotions if you allow yourself to feel them. Yeah, relationship harmony. We angels are opening the hearts of everyone involved. Arguments and conflicts are being resolved now. Because I feel like something is overheard, something is brought in, you see a message or someone tells you something, and it brings this like unrest in the relationship. I've got fighting, the lover's card with interference, and then the devil comes in, which is, you know, imprisonment, self-imprisonment, addiction, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's something that repeats for you, and you've got to clear it, but it's a rough lesson, but it's a lesson you're going to learn in order to bring really beautifully manifested things in your life. This Relationship Harmony card, Archangel Ragwell, it's got a beautiful rainbow above it, if you see that. you know. So there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but you got to get through the rain first, my beautiful Aquarians. And then final sign is Pisces. Pisces, a lot going on for you guys lately. Um, a lot of changes in your lives. But good ones, you know, uh, even though sometimes they're a little bit difficult to navigate, these are things that are, you know, showing you the truth. Uh, Neptune is in Pisces. It's a sign of illusion. So Pisces is starting to see clarity and see things for what they really are. Yeah, you're looking out. I mean, look at this. You're no longer hiding behind the wands. You, now your wands are separated, you've got new growth on them, leaves, and you're looking out towards the future, which is what we are supposed to do in the Aquarian energy. So Pisces, keep doing that. That's what you've been doing. Keep doing it. There's still new messages coming through for you. You're getting them every day. You need to go into a little bit of quiet introspection. You're spending more time alone than usual, and you're supposed to be doing that. This is a huge growth time for Pisces. Um, this full moon is going to bring in some illumination for you, something you've been working on for a long time. So allow it to happen. Um, just stay grounded. My Pisces out there, make sure that you're still going out in nature, walking in the, the ground, grounding, walking in the woods or by the water, or whatever you need to do. Usually for Pisces, walking on the ground barefoot is better than being around water. Even though they love the water, you need to ground. Because this full moon is going to bring in even more clarity than you've been getting this year. Um, and balance for you, of course. But know that the things that you have to walk away from and the things that you know you are, will be walking away from are meant to happen. It's going to bring you to maybe a quieter life, a more simple life, but one that you've been desiring for a while. And now I'm just going to pull an angel card to confirm the reading. Okay. It's for Pisces. Pisces are telling me to pick this card. <laughs> Clear your space. Get rid of clutter, clear the energy around you, and use Feng Shui, Archangel Joe Feel. And that's what I'm feeling. If you look at this Eight of uh, Cups card, it's walking away. It's like, okay, I know I got a lot of stuff here that's really good, but it's not as good as what I know I'm going to. 
And that's kind of what Pisces is being taught right now in your growth spurt. Huge spiritual growth. This is a lesson of non-attachment for you. So if you had to, you know, move or walk away or do something different in your life now, change a job, change your, your living situation, whatever it might be, now the universe is really supporting you in doing it. And that'll be probably for the next two, two and a half years for Pisces as Neptune transits through there and brings you clarity. So I'm going to go to my comments. We only got a couple of minutes left in the show and see what we got here. We did readings for everybody. So I wanted, Kate had said funny, always taught that person you are reading for needed to draw their own cards. A lot of readers want that because they want you to put your energy in the cards. Um, sometimes I read that way, but I think a lot of readers are trained that way because they don't have the psychic level of reading. They're, they're taught what the cards mean and read that way. I read psychically as well as, you know, reading the tarot. So for me, I don't need your energy in the cards. I'm going to pick up your energy anyway. And when I do, um, when I do the Zodiac readings like this, in this order, I am actually drawing on the, the Cosmo and Cosmos and the um, collective energy to do that. So I don't need the person's energy so much. Um, we picked cards, David. Oh, you're welcome, Elaine. Um, who else we got here? I'm going to go back and look at my comments. I got so many people on here tonight. Thank you all for supporting my work. I am going to sign off, and um, I will let you guys know when my next live event is. We had such a great time with everybody. Um, I know you're in Aries. Thank you for tuning in, Pam. Pam Betty, if you're still watching, Pam Betty has a great band, the Pamela Betty Band. You can always catch her live here, there, everywhere. And Joanne, Aaron, I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back next Monday at 7 o'clock. And I will probably have a special guest, so make sure you tune in. And if you want to reach me personally for a private reading or healing session, you can do that at um, Georgia Rose Zenkuda on Facebook, Zenkuda Official on Instagram, or my website, Zenkuda.com. Thank you all for participating in the Zenkuda Soul Space community every Monday night at 7 o'clock on Strong Island Television. Good night, everybody.